Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully, and today we are going to obsessively look through stats from my year of making videos on YouTube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the start of where I started, kind of through the process, when I got monetized, things I've learned along the way, and how much my perception of what I should be doing changed from start to finish. So this is where I started. And this is, um, it started June 14th, 2013. This was my Tara Jacobson channel. I had a picture, I had a video of my son in a moosicle and things like that. But when I decided that I was going to do my artsy fartsy channel, which is way more personal to me than my business channel, I decided that this would be a good one to use. I just privated all the videos that were not related to this. I had been doing some videos related to life over 50, kind of how to dress, how to have confidence, things like that. I think I only left two of those up because I have links to them in blog posts. But everything else I privated, I started around, let's see if we can get a date. Yeah, somewhere in 2020, kind of making some artsy videos. I was doing artwork and I was just kind of making videos of it because I can't do something as a side project just for fun. I have to do something marketing. So this is where I started. I had 12,000 views. My watch time was 1,000 hours and I have 25, 325 subscribers. So my goal at this point, starting on January 1, was to get monetized as quickly as possible. And I would say of those 325 subscribers, most of them followed the channel because of me and because of my marketing um, background rather than because they wanted to see magazine collage. So this was gonna be a little bit of an uphill battle. Okay, so here's something really interesting. So my traffic sources type was 28 brows, external, which would be artsy fartsy life, 17% YouTube search. I had a 2.9% click through rate because there's no reason anybody would have clicked through anything kind of that I'd been doing except for maybe a few of the artsy fartsy videos. Let's go see what they were looking at right then. Now the, the big bump at the end, so see how this goes up and then there's a big bump at the end. This video, my Ikea craft room makeover was one I did um, on purpose and that's 4,000 of the views. So uh, of the 12,000 views, it is a fourth, right? So I was not setting the world on fire. This magazine pro collage process walkthrough was on my blog. And I think I was getting traffic through there. Mixing Purple is on my blog. And then those were just kind of other little videos I'd made. And see right there. So there weren't even enough that these little ones that were overtaking the little ones. So that's where we started out. So I'm not gonna go month by month here, but I did wanna show you January. And I, a couple nice things that were going on. I would gained 111 subscribers, but what made me the happiest was that I had managed to publish a video every day. Work days, not weekends. I did start to get a process, but I didn't really have a great process. So this is the end of the bump, right? So this is the bump from that craft room video and then the rest of it is going to be kind of the start of my real month unorganizing my stamps and dies is the first one from this year that gained like 200 views and then magazine collage and then a vision board because it was the first part of the year so i was doing a couple things right that i was starting to get some video views but literally there's nothing exciting going on. And then what was interesting to me is that we had brows already. I'm up to 3.9 click through. And I had learned at that point that click through rate was one of the things that was super important that you wanted to have, I think at least 5% click through rate. And so that was kind of in the back of my mind, a goal to try to get people to click through. And then I was super sad because I had taken a big, huge course and they said that you should try to get all your traffic from YouTube search. So 16% of it was from YouTube search. But what I didn't know at that time was that suggested videos and browse videos are the ones that you really want because that means that, that YouTube itself 
is actually recommending your videos to the people and there are way more people that are looking at their home screen or watching what's next or something like that. So I accidentally am doing this, which come to find out later that was a really good thing. And then still uh, my external traffic dropped by half, which you would think that you wouldn't want your external traffic to drop by half, but I cannot drive the amount of traffic to my YouTube videos that YouTube can drive, right? So that's, even though I'm getting like 50,000 hits, 70,000 hits a month on my artsy fartsy website, that's a drop in the bucket compared to if we can get YouTube to show our videos on other people's home screens, meaning that when they turn on their YouTube, we're there and you have the opportunity to be seen by them or to be hooked to another video and suggested um, that's another great thing. So the next big thing that happened was in April and I got monetized. Yay me. So I know you need a thousand subscribers. I took this down to May 23rd, 2017 because YouTube said there weren't really any stats before then. So I'm glad that this shows this. I had 19 people subscribe to my channel when there were no videos on it because they saw that the name was Tara Jacobson and I already have 18,000 people on my Twitter. I have 20,000 people on my LinkedIn. I've been on the internet a very long time. And so for some reason with no videos, people subscribe to my YouTube channel. So there is something to be said for having a presence on the internet in that it makes it easier. Now, the one thing that doesn't make it easier so it's kind of half and half for me, I guess. Half of my people, uh, three-fourths of my people, are never going to care about art, magazine collage, organizing your craft room, or any of the things that I want this channel to be known for. But I do have a bunch of Etsy sellers on my, new, on my marketing newsletter list. And so I do think a portion of those Etsy sellers were artistic enough that I was able to get some views over the, especially at the start when it really mattered, when I could help to generate views, was to uh, get the views by, I would publish a video on Friday, I would send out my newsletter and include links to my videos, very specifically saying what they were about because I didn't wanna trick anybody. I wanted people who would be willing to watch those videos but I do think that that gave me a little bit of a bonus. Let's go see how many clicks I was getting. Okay, so April 30th, 2021, this is my end of April, and I got 39 clicks, so they're going to my freebie library. I got 26 clicks to my YouTube, 15, 12, 11, right, and six. So I'm getting some clicks to my YouTube, to my videos. They're not very many, but sometimes just having that little bit of momentum to get your video to start taking off is helpful, right? Like when you're at the very beginning, you need to do whatever you can. If you have a great Facebook group that you can post it to, if you have friends, I happen to have a newsletter list. It has about 7,000 people on it. So obviously that wasn't, well, we can see how many got sent. So which one was it? Hold on, there we go, view report. So I sent this to 6,400 people. I had a 23% open rate and the click rate is really low because I was sending an email about marketing and telling them to go to an artsy fartsy <laughs> channel, right? There's a disconnect there. But so this, what do you do after the goal? I was actually talking about the fact that I had monetized my YouTube channel and I had kind of taken them along for the ride on this with me. And so, yeah, I probably did get some subscribers that were more marketing related, but that wanted to help me. But my goal was to get monetized and I made my goal. So this is my first month of being monetized, May 2021. And my estimated revenue was $112.71. Now, if you aren't being monetized for anything on the internet, that would be amazing. Like the first time I made any money 
from the internet, I was just over the moon. But for me, I make thousands of dollars a month on my blogs from ad revenue. So to make $112 was a little bit disappointing, to be honest with you. That's because I get higher RPMs, uh, revenue per thousand on my blogs than I get on my artsy fartsy videos. And also I get more money on my marketing artfully video channel than I get on artsy fartsy because people that advertise are more willing to pay money for business clients, business eyeballs, than they are for consumer eyeballs to watch, you know, the ads on your YouTube videos. For me, the fact that I was putting all this work in and at the same time making less money even than I do on my uh, Marketing Artfully YouTube channel was a little disappointing, but I knew that there was nowhere to go but up. So this is December. If you haven't been involved in online marketing for very long, you might be surprised because my views didn't go up considerably. My watch time didn't go up considerably, but my revenue went to 200. And that's because in the advertising world, the end of the year is so much better for advertising dollars that even if your views go down, the advertisers are willing to pay more money, number one, because they have the Christmas holiday, but also because at the end of the year, a lot of marketing budgets are use it or lose it. So if they don't use up their ad spend by the end of the year, the next year in their budget line item, they won't get to have that mon much money to spend on marketing the next year. So you get a real bump for that. I was really happy with how it turned out. The next thing I'm gonna show you is the overall year, but I wanted to show you the difference in how like your RPMs really make a difference. So my RPMs are $10 based on this. And let's go back to April of 2021, or let's go back to May. My RPM here is 1089 and my RPM was $6.71. So a couple reasons why my RPM was so much lower in April, revenue per thousand, is number one, advertisers were just starting to figure out what my channel was about and if they could be successful advertising on it. Now they don't do it on a one-to-one -one basis. It's done on a huge basis and um, YouTube does that. So they're, they're, serving my, they're serving ads on my videos, seeing if people like them, seeing if people are clicking, if they're watching their ads, things like that. But that like $4 difference in RPM could make a big difference in how much money you're gonna make, right? So that is something super important to think about is how much how much your RPMs are and kind of keep an eye on that. That's something that I really watch out for. Here is the final results for the year and don't go away after this because there are so many more interesting things than this that I found out that you can learn to use on your channel and your videos. I'll show them to you too. I got lifting the skirt. I got nothing to hide here. So I was some things that I was super excited about and then some things I wasn't excited about. So I chased the bump for a long time. So the first time, which was April 9th, that I made more, that I got more views than the bump, was a super exciting day. I find it really, really funny that I get more views in August, like in the summer, than I do in the fall because that's exactly opposite of my marketing channel. So that's one of the things that I have found in my business is that if you have multiple streams of income and you can make sure that they don't rise and fall at the same time, that's an excellent thing. For example, I sell some calendars, I sell some things like that. And so I will have added income in January from that store and I will not get my advertising <laughs> income from December until February, March 1st. So if you can kind of spread that out, spread out how the income from your different revenue streams comes in, it can help. Now that having been said, I made $1,351.26 for the whole year. The whole entire year of five videos a week 
every week for a year. I didn't do the holidays, but the rest of the time I was doing that. So would I consider that a win or would I consider that a loss? No. So number one, in terms of revenue, it's a loss for me because I ignored my blogs for much of the year in order to be able to do the videos. And so my revenue stagnated on my blogs. It didn't drop much, but it didn't go up. And had I spent a year focusing on my blogs rather than focusing on YouTube, there was an opportunity cost maybe lost there, right? But my goal in life is to be happy rather than to be like super rich. So getting to do art for a year was a bonus for me. Number two, I get really excited about learning something new. So now I'm able to take all the information, all the data that I got from making a year of videos and really be able to hone in on what could help me make more money going forward. And number three, I'm a long game kind of gal. I know that I am getting paid today on blog posts that I writ wrote in 2012. So the fact that I am not necessarily getting paid on videos I made a month ago doesn't surprise me whatsoever. I'm going to be able to take those videos, put them on blog posts, get Google traffic to the blog posts, get ad revenue on my blog posts, and then drive them to views on YouTube and get ad revenue from YouTube. So I think it's really important to know what your goals are and how you're building your revenue. This goes back for me over the years to all the tricks and things you could try to do on Google to game the system. And you could, you know, write article spinners, you could do directories, you could do all these different kinds of things by backlinks. You could try all these things to game the system. I never did that. I just wrote good quality blog posts. And over the years, I accumulated um, a lot of Google listings by being really strategic with my strategy. And I think that you can do that same thing with YouTube. So now I'm going to show you some of the things that I think are really cool about this year of video. So here are my top videos for the year. This one I consider an outlier because it ranks on Google for um, Magazine Collage, actual Google search. So I get a lot of views from that. And we're going to look at the stats for that one because that one's really interesting. Uh, the before and after, I don't count so much because like 3,000 of it is from the very first part of the year that's rolled over from the last year. So it did not bump that much after this year. Let's see if we can see what happened this year. Okay, this is since publish, and see, this is the big jump, and it's just gradually been going. It isn't, it didn't get another jump. Darn it. But I have another Ikea video from this year that did get a little bit of a jump. Okay, next, it, so this is what shocks me. So we'll get past those two first ones, and now here's the rest of my top 10. This goes along with my theory that more people care about glue than marketing, in that I have um, Map versus Gloss Mod Podge. Now the, the percentage viewed sucks on this. It is 7.2%, so they're not watching all of it. I made it at the first part of the year, and I think my videos have gotten much better as the year's gone on. And this Glossy Accents one does really good, making stencils with the joy, reusable stencils with the joy, using coloring pages in magazine collage, beginner magazine collage, and I took a collage class. So if you had put a gun to my head and asked me what I thought would be my top videos, I would have said magazine collage because that's what I notice on a day-to-day -day basis. But the cool thing about this is five of my top seven, nine, are of branded products that do well in search, right? So those are search-based ones. And I'm going to show you behind the scenes. Don't fret. But I think it's really interesting that so many of them are actually brand-based. They creep up on you. So let's do like how to make stencils with a Cricut Joy. It's just like a little die-cutting machine. So see, it's there's nothing exciting happening except that it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up, right? So and 57, oh, that's my real time, sorry. So this is a problem, right? I was really crappy 
at starting my videos and so they drop off like crazy as you see now my averages I do much better so for me there's a lot of opportunity there that just makes me that just makes me smile but it's the reason why my um so that's the retention is how long people stay on it let's look at this one oh boy i don't even really want to know i think i did really good on this one it's a very popular one and this goes back to when everybody says to make good videos yeah see this is this is from a very long time ago but even at the same time I'm really good at, I was much better at doing that. And the reason why these little peaks happen is um, I did the, I did the timestamps on it. So what's happening is people are watching things, they're jumping to the next timestamp. They're watching things, jumping to the next timestamp. So 69% of my viewers are still watching around the 30, which is pretty typical. And I'm not going to go to my channel, channel analytics. Oh gosh, that's hard to say. On that one okay so those are interesting right that to me is really cool that all of these how to do magazine collages that I thought were doing amazing are actually are less successful over time for getting views right for getting actual people to click on my video okay as a blogger this was super exciting to me if you come into your video analytics and then you go to advanced mode boop, 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 and then you go to traffic source this is what has happened and i want to go for the full year Okay, and let's go weekly because that's a lot of data. So what I want to show you as a blogger, so when I started this, our very first one that was the highest down here is external. So I got 53 views to my video. I got 39 views to my video. And this is all the way through the middle of January. And then it crossed over and it became one of the suggested videos. But had I not, and then everything else kind of stays the same, right? But getting into that suggested video, which means that when somebody's watching a video, like on the side or on the bottom, wherever they see them, like it's suggested as one of the next ones that you might want to watch. And that's really interesting. That gives me a whole lot of ability. Oh, I can get one more, to, six more to get 10,000. That gives me a whole lot of ability to say, oh, if I can, oh, I wonder if this one does it too. Let's go to, uh, the other one is composition. That's in my top videos 10 composition rules to use in your magazine collage that has a blog post too not all of them have blog posts but the ones that have blog posts it's going to be interesting to see what happens here so it started out in youtube search right like i got a huge boost in browse that's what it so so whenever you load a video you're going to get a really big jump in browse right and so what's happening here is the blue line is cert purple is external so there up oh, there's another bump for external and now it's going back into browse so that one didn't do that same thing but it is coming up in youtube search which is really interesting i don't think clicking on this gives us the keyword i don't love the analytics in here oh it does Oh my goodness. All right, so it's doing well in collage, magazine collage, collage composition. So there's nothing really driving it. It's just got a ton of long tail keywords. Now I'm way better with keywords than I am with Google or with YouTube stats because I've been doing search engine SEO since like 2001. So if you give me some good keywords, I can figure things out. But I thought that that was super interesting that the first video actually was being driven by my blog post rather than by YouTube. Like I said before, one of the reasons that I wanted to do so many videos was so that I would get information about how to get more views, specific things I could work on. So one of the easiest ones, it seems to me, is how to use this impressions to click through rate 
to increase the amount of people who click on your video. So they're shown in the home, they're shown in the suggested, and then they click through. So I'm up 54%, right? So I had a three and a half click through rate and I maxed out at a 6.5% click-through rate. So some things that you can do. You can just swap it out and then check that click-through rate on each video, but I don't have time for that. So what I do is I use TubeBuddy to, um, and this is not cheap. None of my testing tools are cheap. I use SEMrush, it's $100 a month. I use this, this was like $300 a year, but it's worth it to me because here's two different how to make big eyed paper dolls, which is factually what that is, but I made up the term big eyed paper dolls. And then I changed it to how to make collage, magazine collage people. The variation has a 14.29% click through and the original has a zero, right? So that is way better. That is a hundred billion percent better. So that is going to be very cool to see if by doing different, because I have a whole bunch of different split tests I'm doing. This one for sure was saying the variation is doing better. This one for sure is saying the variation is doing better too. Let's see what this says. There's not, it's still in progress. There's not a whole lot of data there yet. So the the original has a 2.83% variation, 8.2, and the, the other one has 5.71. So if I can go through each of my thumbnails, especially on the ones that get a lot of traffic, um, and that was in suggested and browse. Now this is not statistically significant because it's just not enough yet. But I, you know, I can make a decision. I'm not making a decision until it's done. But I can absolutely say that I would much rather have a 5.71% click-through rate, meaning that 5.71 of the people that see this one click on this one, as opposed to 2.82% that see this and click on this one. Now, another thing that is super cheap, that is easy, that makes this really easy to do. I do all my thumbnails in Canva, and I used to just do one thumbnail, but now I do lots of them. I'm taking a class from Daryl Eves, a 30-day YouTube challenge, and that has just been delightful. I also bought his book. I'll link to his book and to his challenge. Both are worth it. The book, if you buy it on his website, you get this amazing course that goes with it. So, okay, so here is what's happening because I may be split testing my thumbnails. I started doing more and more different ones to try to figure out what is gonna work. And this is in Canva Design, the nice thing about it. I'll show you what I'm doing now and then I'll show you why it's so cool. So I am gonna just try this for harvesting magazine collages. I'm gonna try this for, har no words. I have this one, that's the one I uploaded it with. I have this one that I can test it against. Here are two gel printing backgrounds. And the nice thing is you can just move things around. Okay, so say this is my old style before I split tested and found out that they like this one better. So all I have to do now is this. I just repeat this. I take this, these words, I come over here, make it 50. I pull it down here, maybe I try 60. There we go. I made this white. I put a little bar behind it. And you can do all of this for free. There's, there's not a charge for making YouTube thumbnails on Canva. Okay, we make this big so you can see her face like we did the other one. And we download it. And so then I can upload that to TubeBuddy. I'm going to do this. Um, I can upload that to do TubeBuddy to do the split test on my thumbnails. And again, the thumbnails will get you a higher click rate. All right, with the thumbnails and the title, you can work backwards, right? You can go back in and at any time go fix those things. But one of the things that I want to work on going forward, because you can't really change your YouTube videos, 
is my average percentage viewed. So it's this column. So you want to go to channel analytics, reach, more information, little plus sign, average percentage viewed. And this means that most people only viewed a fifth of my video. Of my top videos, this is the best one, the Big Eyed People, the magazine collage process. And so what I'm gonna do is I am going to try to get a longer percentage view time. Now, how can you do that? You can do that by editing your video. You can do that by people keeping, keeping people engaged by using transitions. You can do it by putting timestamps in your video. There are a lot of things that you can do to increase that average percentage viewed. Oh, you can make a better video, right? My videos now, that's an old, that's one of the oldest videos. This is an older one. And Vogue Italia, that's a newer one. So just there, I've probably gone up 15% just because I make better videos. And this one has 100% like. It's just that I didn't know how to make videos before. And now I'm taking courses and finding out more about how to make better videos that people will like. The other thing that you um, may see with this chart, because you're a nosy Parker, is my watch time in hours. And the reason why my watch time in hours is crazy long is because my videos are crazy long. One of my longest videos is like an hour and a half, or one of my best videos is like an hour and a half long. And that's insane. So my average, I took an average of my top 10 videos and found out that 44 minutes is the average length of my video's runtime. So I will be testing that, of course, too, to see if shorter videos do better or longer videos do better. So hopefully all that helped. Tara Jacobson, Marketing Artfully.